All right, guys, good old boy 32 here. Check it out. We're sitting in our home away from home. This is the KB32 Studios. We're almost done. Got about half that wall done with the studio foam insulation. And uh, got a little bit of this done over here, but I thought it'd be kind of interesting to show you. This is the review table where we do uh, the tabletop reviews. Got a bunch of cool stuff coming out this week. I've been slacking lately. Uh, let's just say the real job is kicking ass. And we are kicking ass at it. But I can't wait to start doing reviews. We're getting ready for the big uh, PCC2 gun down at Talladega. So we're going to have some exercise and we're going to be shooting a couple competitions until then. And then I've got the... Uh, the JP Rifles GMR-15 sent to the channel by the, my good friend Ethan Manning. We're going to be taking that out hopefully this week and doing some testing with it. All right, so uh, I thought it would be interesting. You see behind me, there are several firearms that are set up. Now, are these up there for display to, oh, I don't know. And some people say uh, to intimidate individuals. These are inferred. This is implied intimidation. I was watching Tucker Carlson the other evening, and he had uh, uh, some videos on there from this guy named Chris Hayes over on MSNBC. Now, I'll just tell you a little bit about Chris Hayes. He's got a little bit of long hair, good double chin, wears a little round glasses, and of course, he's a just a huge uh, proponent of anything socialist, communist, or whatever. And his whole premise for this little segment that he did was to do a couple things. One, tell his viewers that uh, anyone who has to put guns up behind them in such a way, now you guys probably think, wow, those are really cool. I wonder what he's got there, man. I hope he does a review on it. Those, that's the kind of things that we think of. But someone like Chris Hayes, what he thinks of is that this is an inferred threat. This is implied threat. If you're a 2 way guy and you have firearms up behind you, then you're implying threat. You see this right here? Molon Loeb. I'm gonna talk about this here in a minute and what he says this means. We all know what it means, come and take it. In this segment, the first thing he does is he puts up Donald Trump Jr. in front of his firearms in a wall and there's a couple really, really nice precision target pistols. These are hand carved. These are very expensive precision machines. They're not assault weapons. They're not anything of the case. Hell, they're bolt action pistols. But he implies that, oh, this is the worst thing in the world. He's just, seriously, he's just bad. So let's watch this. Stand by. Pointedly standing in a front of a wall of guns. The whole thing had a, here are my thoughts from my bunker vibe. My bunker bot. How about that? That was cute, wasn't it? Uh, and, and you would think that coming from him. In this next se segment, we're talking about several other people. Uh, Lauren Boebert. You know, we all know Lauren Boebert. She's the lady from uh, Colorado. I believe it is, and then she loves her Second Amendment, and we all do, and she's expressed that to just about everybody. But in this little part of the segment, he talks about Lauren and her firearms. Here we go. Stand by. Last Thursday, she zoomed into a virtual congressional hearing with just a mess of guns piled on the bookshelf behind her. Oh, just a, a mess of guns. Yes, it's just a, just a big old mess of guns up there behind her, and, you know, here it is. Guys, guys, what's a mess of guns? Well, I guess a mess of guns, this right here would probably make uh, Chris Hayes pee in his pants. To you and me, this is no big deal. All it is is, well, we men in this world, we kind of like to show off our firearms. We go and test them, we show it, we express and show our skill at putting these things to work in competition and other things. It just blows my millennium. In this next segment, let's take a look at this. You know, lots of people immediately noted that the use of guns in that way as props and the implicit threat that comes with them has a implicit threat that comes with them. What is he, what the hell is he talking about? Are these guys threatening to you? I don't think so. If you're liberal and this is your first time here, guys, ladies and gentlemen, we're not here to threaten or an implicit threat or an implied threat. These are machines. And I take a lot of pride in being able to operate them proficiently with a lot of practice. They're very expensive. This is not something that we play games with. But by no means do these imply anything other than, well, they're a, a tool for defense in my book. And this next thing, he compares Donald Trump, myself, Lauren Boebert, to a couple unique individuals around the world. Here we go. Osama bin Laden, for one, liked to pose in front of a bookshelf with a gun prominently displayed. The Irish Republican Army would display guns in its propaganda posters and its murals. Cuban revolutionaries, they posed with guns all the time, too. 
<laughs> the Cuban revolutionaries, they posed with their firearms too. Well, just ask my good friend, Is Your Six Covered, what happens when he's on a live chat and picks up a 2x4 with a scope on it. Sad. But this is where we are these days because you have people like this, this Chris Hayes, developing policy for, I don't know, people like YouTube, people like Facebook, people like Instagram and Twitter. Here he goes. He's talking more about Lauren Boebert. Unquestionably, the aesthetic of armed struggle, of revolution or insurrection. Uh, guys, the, the word, the term, the use of of insurrection is about to piss me off. They've misused this word. It's misinformation, if you will. Insurrection, that shit that happened on January 6th was not an insurrection. That was a bunch of people who were rioting. You want to talk about insurrection? Let's talk about, oh, I don't know, that thing in Portland where the, what is it, what are those idiots out there took over an entire city block? That, ladies and gentlemen, is insurrection. Let's continue talking about some other things. Here we go. A movement or faction that puts images of guns, the celebration of guns, front and center in its political aesthetic, you can't escape the meaning of it. It, it, it communicates that they are committed to, or at the very least, open the possibility of violent overthrow of the government or the existing order. For the love of God, somebody just teach this guy something about humanity. Because I have this in the background, does that mean that I am going to try to take over the government? No. But the Second Amendment is there for us, the individuals, the citizens. And he's going to start talking about the Second Amendment. And he's going to start talking about some other individuals here real quickly. A, a, a fearful little brat that has no other means of communication. He reminds me of a little nit behind the keyboard. Here again, he's talking about somebody else in the Republican Party. Here we go. She wears a mask reading Molon Labe, which is ancient Greek for come and take them in the halls of Congress. And that's been used for a bunch of reasons. But in her case, the implied message seems to be, if you try to take away our guns, we'll start shooting. That in itself is the biggest bullshit. If you even said something like that, Molon Lobi, if you take our guns, we're going to start shooting. Here he is again with Donald Trump Jr. and the implied the implied threat when Republicans use guns as props. Many Republicans are now signaling they retain the right to use violence to overthrow the government at any time, that that's actually the core of part of their political principles in the Second Amendment, and they are willing to brandish that claim as a threat in pursuit of their political aims. I, I don't know one single politician, including Donald Trump or Donald Trump Jr., who has said that we will threaten the United States government with the Second Amendment is our political stance. All I've heard is that we're not going to let them take your Second Amendment, whereas you got a guy named Joe Biden who is full tilt in removing our right for self-defense. This last part takes the cake. Here we go. It's become increasingly standard for the most hardcore devotees of Trump and his faction to at the very least wink at the notion that they're ready to hurt anyone who gets in their way. So I guess if you have a firearm or you have a picture of a firearm and you're a Republican, then you are, a, are winking at the implied threat that you will hurt anyone that gets in your way. Guys, let me know what your thoughts are down below. It's people like this who will destroy this country from inside out. And it's up to you and I to make sure that that doesn't happen. Let's go to Boy32 or KB32. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women, in uniform who protect our Constitution and our Bill of Rights as it was written by our founding fathers. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. I guess. I'm out of here. Y'all be good.